Wednesday. Wednesday. See, last night we, we carved pumpkins. Carved, pumpkin carving night at the house with the kids. So that was fun. I always got to separate some time for them. So that was good. Give it to me. What we got? So look at Utah. Obviously, the running game is just beyond dominant. But just, one of those teams really can't sleep on the passing game because, I mean, just when you think they're you know, trying to stop the run, they can uh, get the play action. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're the hottest team in our league right now. I mean, they're averaging 41 points a game over their last four games. And that's what you, traditionally, uh, normally we break down the last four to see how they're doing. And then if there's somebody that we have a common opponent that is scheme-wise, which we don't usually, but um, we'll look at that too. But their last four games, they're averaging 41 points. They're averaging 481 yards a game. They're rushing for 244, and they're throwing for 237. So uh, scary. I mean, they're, they're, they're big. They're physical. Uh, they they've got a couple playmakers out on the edge, and they've got a slot receiver that I mean we haven't we haven't faced anybody quite as dynamic as him so far. Um, the running back tries to he tries to kill you when he lines you up. I mean they ain't going they don't have to worry about missing because uh, our guys won't miss tackles because they get juke because he tries to find them and he hunts you up. And then Tyler Huntley's I mean he's a He's big. You can throw it. He'll run over you. It's like having a. It's like being in the wildcat formation almost every time with a guy that can throw it. So they present a lot of problems, and and um, we'll we'll try and put the best thing we can together to go have some fun. I mean, as far as the running game, did they do something much different than other opponents? A lot of misdirection. I mean, you've got a lot of uh, because their quarterback is such a dynamic carrier, ball carrier. Um, they'll pull guards one way and and run him out the other. They do a lot of fly sweep. Uh, it's a lot of misdirection to try and get you looking somewhere else and then, and then hit you up the gut. Um, they're, if you're not disciplined with your eyes, um, they, can make some, they can get some really big plays on you. That normally, the normal teams, I mean, if you, uh, really, you have really good linebackers that can read guards and they pull, the ball will be going the other way. So, I mean, we got, a lot, we got to give them some stuff that you have to be sound so that you can you can attack both plays and uh, be able to cover that. It's it's uh, they have some some triple option stuff to their scheme. That's not your traditional fullback dive. I mean, it's it's out of different formations. I mean, they might hand it off. They might run the power read. They might hand it off the fly and then come back with the counter going the other way. So it's a lot of stuff. And now that they've been, I mean, I think uh, Huntley's first game was the second half of, of the Arizona State game last year. Was his first big action. And uh, from that point on, they've kind of decided to, what plan they're going to be, how they're going to roll. Um, and I think the turning point of their season so far was probably Northern Illinois. In the second half of that game, they, set, they found some things out of their 12 personnel package, the two tight ends. And from that point on, they've just continued to build and build and build. And, and now they're, they're like a freight train. I mean, they're, like I said, they're putting up 481 and 41 points a game. So they're coming in here with a lot of confidence. Yes, I think George has done a great job moving out there. He's, he's made quite a few plays. He's playing his tail off uh, effort-wise. Um, Shannon, Shannon gives us some stuff inside. I mean, he's a little bit heavier than, uh, than George, but he's got a, the quick twitch that Rennell does. I think Rennell was a, it was a, it was a welcome, welcome back to see Rennell play the way he did on Saturday. He was very disruptive on a lot of things. He played with great effort. and, and uh, he had disappeared a little bit for, for about five games, and, and to see him uh, give some effort like he did, um, I don't think his lack of, I don't think it was lack of effort the first five games. He just kind of disappeared. He wasn't doing the same things, and he showed up on Saturday with a mindset ready to play, um, and he did some good stuff. So losing DJ hurts. Um, luckily, he'll be, he should be back by spring ball so that we can get him prepared for next year. Uh, George has a lot of reps inside, so if if Shannon has some trouble inside, which I don't anticipate, I mean he's been really good in practice so far. We could always put George back in there, uh, but we're we're gonna go with Shannon in there and George outside, and then Jermaine, um, Lole, and and Jalen Bates will be on the outside, and uh, Michael Matus has been practicing with us a little bit this week. Um, the, another benefit of that four game rule. I mean, he's, he's quick and, and he can, can do some things to get in their backfield. It's going to be a very similar deal to Stanford. If we can get in their backfield and, and get some negative plays and make them, to, make them decide to cut before they get downhill, 
then we'll have a chance to stop them. I mean, that's the that's going to be the key. I mean, play aggressive, and if, if we're aggressive, we'll have a chance, and it'll be fun. It'll be, it's going to be physical. It is the the type of football game that I like to watch. I mean, it's it's what I like to be a part of, and and so I mean, we were watching the game yesterday and or practice yesterday, and uh, at one point there was 18 dudes on the ground. Uh, the only two the the quarterback wasn't, and our two deep safeties weren't, and, and here I am. Wondering why the two safeties ain't getting up in there jumping on the pile, and, and Coach Edwards is going, "Oh my God, look at that!" I mean, it's it's different. I mean, you don't see that in the NFL. So this is all this has been something fun for him to watch. Um, I mean, at times it's going to look like a rugby scrum, which if you like physical football, it will be fun. It, it was good, you know. There, I mean, I think week to week we're making we're making progress on things. Uh, I mean, I shared some stuff. I break down this the games after we watch them to see where we're where we're making improvement, where we're really where we're not making the improvement that we would like, um, where we're lacking. I mean, obviously the two minute stuff right now is killing us. Um, I mean, if you go back and, and you watch that game, we show signs of of the ability to be pretty good, and then in the future we're going to keep getting better. The first 28 minutes and 16 seconds of that game, they've run 28 plays. They have 41 total yards of offense and no points against the defense. We go out, we get a targeting penalty. The first play, we have a, uh, we make an assignment error. One of our defensive ends sticks his nose inside when it's supposed to collapse the pocket and, and cover two in that situation to not give the quarterback a running lane. And Jack Sears rushes for 22 yard gain. We stop them on first down. We stop them on second down. We have a third and four, and we get a pass interference call. Um, that gives them another first down down there. We have a, a coaching error. We have a substitution error, which we should never try and substitute on uh, in the two-minute situation when they're trying to hurry up. We made a mistake doing that. We'll get that corrected. That was addressed. Um, and then we have an assignment error on the touchdown. Well, they go down and they go 75 yards in, in just a, under a, min, a minute and 12 seconds. And we give up a touchdown when they hadn't been able to move the ball much all day. So we give them a little bit of confidence. And then we come out in the third quarter and we talked about it all week about the third quarter adjustments. Third quarter has been tragedy around here. Well, I mean, you can do things differently and address. I mean, I think sometimes when you harp on something, it becomes an issue and now they're thinking about it. So we probably harped on it too much because they come out and that was their best drive of the game and our worst with the Simon errors. We had nine, it was a nine play 87 yard drive and we have three assignment errors and two penalties and we don't make a play in cover. We have two chances to make a play in coverage on that drive that we don't and they score a touchdown. Now they've got the momentum. We fumble the ball on offense on our own 36. It's our job to go out there and stop them, make them punt, make them try a field goal, get the ball back for the offense and in one play they run a double pass and we got a guy that's in position to make a play and doesn't make a play in coverage. And that's Kobe. And then we got a free safety coming over the top. Kobe's in the right spot. We're playing zone. He read it. He just doesn't make the play. Kobe Williams probably made the play of the game the next series. They go down. They have a long deep ball where we, we get uh, our safety gets sucked up on pl run play action. He comes over from the corner and he knocks the ball out as it's caught. And I think, in my opinion, that's the difference in the game because if they make that touchdown, they go up now, they're up by two scores. I mean, it's going to be 34-21 and, and, or 35-21, and, and there's a chance that we may not overcome that. He makes play, we stop him. From that point on, 9-26 in the third quarter, they get 112, or 116 yards let more of offense until the last drive. We score a touchdown, they get the ball back, and another two-minute situation that we don't perform very well. The good thing is, like I said earlier in the season on, the, on those first two wins, when you win games, it's easier to coach those guys. I was a bear in the meeting on Sunday because we played dominant defense for 28 minutes and then we relax. And then we go through a spell, it's about a 13 play spell, that they, get the, they end up with their 21 points that they scored against us. And then we go again and we go on, we go on a dominant range until we relax, we think the game's over and we go out there. Now, like I said, we played a little bit of softer coverage. The first one we played cover two. The second one we blitz him and, we, and he makes a bad throw. The third one we blitz him. We get him into, they had to clock it on one of them. We get him into a fourth down. And I went three-man rush, drop eight. Probably should have ran four-man rush. But 
dropping the, the plan in cover two was, was probably the right call in that situation because they only had 35 seconds, the clock's running. And it's an ultimate sin by a safety in cover two to get beat deep, especially in that situation. Well, that was, I said it last week. Welcome to college football, Cam Phillips. It's your fourth play as in college football against USC against a, a great receiver. And the poor young man sent me a text that night, which I absolutely loved because it bothered him. It was just tearing him up that that had happened. And as coaches, I mean, it was, I, he, he was worried that we lost confidence in him. Man, he's a freshman. It was his fourth play of his college career in a big time atmosphere. I promise you he gets in that situation again, it's going to be different. And that's going to benefit us in the, in the future. Now, thank God we won the game because it wasn't a game-changing play at that point because Nikhil did a nice job on the, the uh, onside kick. But he learned from it. I put him in a situation that he probably wasn't ready for. But he's going to be better for it as we get going. We show signs and flashes of dominance with, with some missing pieces. If they continue on this path, we're going to be brilliant. Now, giving up 35 points, that drives me absolutely crazy. We gave up the punt return, which we've got a bunch of defensive guys on that, on that play that should make the tackle. We give up the last touchdown that you shouldn't give up. So we, for, we, we, made, we play really good, and then we, we, colla we collapse for a little, little pockets. They know. I tell them. I, I, like I say, I don't sugarcoat anything. And I tell them, you know, I mean, uh, when, when they're good, they get the credit. When, it's, when we screw up, it's on me. We need to coach those nine minutes better. We need to coach two minute better. We need to coach the assignment errors better. And, and within that time when they're playing really good, we're still making some block reaction stuff that we don't, we don't do right. But they're playing hard enough that, that it, uh, we're making up for some of those mistakes. The fourth and one coming off the improvement, I think the sideline was really good. And I thought that was a big part of the game. I thought that was a big turning point. Uh, they kicked the field goal, it's tied, who knows? I was glad they went for it, and I was glad that when they called timeout, Coach White did a great job. He saw what personnel they had in there, gave us plenty of time to talk through the whole situation. They did a great job, and Rennell Wren was awesome. Did just like he did against Michigan State. Went forward, and then you could tell a little spark on our sideline, and the offense goes right, right down, and I think we punted, and we stopped them again, and then we got the ball back and scored. I mean, they punted with three, four minutes to go. They thought they were going to stop us, and our offense did a great job and ran the clock out. Well, they scored a touchdown. I wish they'd have ran the clock out, but they scored a touchdown. So the, I think it was. Sorry to get back to your question. I think it. <laughs> it. it uh, yes, it did give us some momentum coming to the side. These tangents they get old. Sorry. Sorry coach. Yes. You know what, Jalen, uh, he's made a great transition from when we started in the spring to where he is now. Now, he only played 13 plays on Saturday, and, and there was a little bit of a drop off because he's been getting all the reps and all the game reps. And then Evan came in and Daz came in, and, and the combination of those two spelled him. And, and Jalen was missed a little bit. Now, Evan did a nice job on some plays. He'll be better this week. Uh, Jalen has practiced this week. We'll see how he's going to be tomorrow for sure. Um, when you get a stinger, those things are, they're person to person. I mean, sometimes he can play in the very first hit. If he can't, if he loses strength, then the doctors will pull him out and the right thing to do. And, and so we're preparing that way. But his, the intangibles that he brings is, one, he's, he's very physical. Um, he likes to play. He plays with that, that hair on fire attitude that we've been talking about around here. And he's, he's trying to become a leader. Now I think eight and 37 are, are becoming the vocal ones around here. That's Merlin and Darian. But in the secondary, he's, he's right 99% of the time on where he's supposed to line up in the shots that he's taken, which early in the season, it wasn't even close to that. So give him a lot of credit for the preparation that he's doing week to week. If everybody would prepare as hard as he is, we could be really, really good. We've still got a lot of young guys that don't know how to do that yet. And he's helping to lead, lead that on. And as soon as those guys understand and, and it's, it's brushing off from him, that's when you elevate. That's when 
you are making plays because you're anticipating what they're doing. Jalen is kind of getting to that point. He's seeing, he's seeing gaps open up and he's running through them. And the ability, the, the, that position gives him the ability to do that. Uh, I don't put any rules on that guy. Their rule is to make plays. And if they don't make plays, they get fired. They don't get coached differently, they get fired. Because that is a, that is a football player that you have to, they have to have some natural ability to react because it's not a traditional position. You don't, you don't take on linemen and, and wrong shoulder run back to a linebacker. You can run up there and act like you're going to and then dip underneath his, underneath his legs and tackle the guy with your, I mean, I don't care how they do it. As long as they're making plays, it fits within the scheme because we're gonna funnel all the stuff to that guy. And if you don't have that guy, you gotta do things different. And he's developing that. Now Tyler Wiley in preseason, he was developing that guy. So hopefully next year between him and a couple of the freshmen and, and Evan, those guys will be able to continue to do what Jalen has built on so far. Coach Sherm said on Monday in regards to the overall team mentality that it doesn't take talent to have an effort, it just takes a big part. I agree. Given the adversity that the team went through in the middle of the season, the defense as a whole, what do you see as their mindset heading down the final stretch with so much still in reach for this team? They, they believe in what we're doing as a defense and as a program everything's going in the right direction. There's, there has not been any dissent. I mean, the, the ones that, I mean, there's, in all program changes, you're going to have guys that don't believe what you're doing. Well, those guys usually eliminate themselves. And we've got a few of that, and that's okay. There's a belief system going on that we're going to be successful. And so week to week, I mean, on, on Saturday, you saw a little bit of it the first half on defense. After about the third series, we had five, the fifth one, the two minute, the third series, those guys came over to the sideline with that look of, we were the more dominant physical team. That's fun when you play like that. We can't relax. We have to continue to develop that killer instinct. Uh, they've won some games around here. They've never been in a position where when you get a team down 24 seven, the ball game should be over. You should suffocate them. We let them back in. We didn't know we didn't let them back in. We let them take the lead. That's the part, that's the missing piece right now is getting that where you step on somebody's throat and you just finish them off. We'll continue to build that. They're, they're getting a little bit of a, a taste of it. And the thing that makes me really proud of them is when things go bad, there's no panic. We gave up the two touchdowns. We gave up the 21 points in that spurt. And they still believe in what we're doing. They know it's going to work. And they're overcoming a lot of the things because, like you said, effort. You don't have to be the most talented guy in this game to be good. The, the, the great equalizer in football is physical, just beating somebody up. And if they're more talented than you, but you're tougher than they are, you're going to win a lot of those battles. And that's what we're continuing to instill in our guys. We're going to be, and I, it goes back to when I said when I first got here, you do the research of this program. Coach Cush had those guys believing that every time they stepped on the field, they were the physical dominant team. It didn't matter who stepped in here. We were going to beat them up. We're going to physically dominate them and beat them up. That's the direction we're heading. And if we can do that, not only on defense, but become a culture of that on offense, we're going to pound the ball and be able to throw it. And when we throw it, you catch it and you, you run somebody over and you try and destroy them. When you tackle somebody, you tackle the first guy and hold them up and the next three or four come through and they try and just in this day, that's the mentality that we want. And effort will get you there. Everybody good? Awesome. Thank you. Happy Halloween. That's right. It's trick or treat night now.